About a year and a half ago, I was contributing music to about three television series at the same time, while scoring a video game, and on top of all that, a pilot came in at the very last minute. So I found myself needing to write and fully produce at least 30 minutes of music every five days. Sometimes it was more, which meant a minimum of six minutes a day to stay on top of the delivery deadlines for this crunch period. This example illustrates why writing music efficiently can be one of your greatest assets as a film and television composer. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you specifically what I do to pull off a task like this. I'm gonna share how I use my sequencer to avoid having to do non-musical tasks, what tools I use or recommend, and so on. If you're a Logic user, you'll definitely wanna watch through because Cubase, in my experience, has a couple of features that Logic does not have, but I'll be recommending some great third-party plugins so that it'll give you similar capabilities to Cubase. I'll also share what I've done over the years to train myself so that I could take on this sort of workload rather commonly. And here's the best part. Because this is about efficiency, we're gonna go over all of this in under 15 minutes. So the timer's already started, let's dive in. The first thing you need to do to work efficiently as a composer is number one, streamline your template and instruments. I think of my template inside of Cubase like an iPhone. Every single year, there's a major update, and between projects, I do some smaller updates to keep everything running efficiently. The most important thing about my template is that I have every single instrument pre-routed, mixed with effects, EQ, compression, it's all ready to go. So for example, you'll see my low strings here. They have some EQ adjustments that I like, the reverb sends that I prefer, and they're already routed to the low string stem bus. None of this has to be done during my composition process. As a result, I spend very little time mixing, unless it's a sound for my project specific area over here. You'll see that I already have empty Contact, Zebra, Diva, and Repro instruments ready to go in this space. I never have to waste time loading applications over and over again. Within Contact, there's a really helpful feature I use called Quick Load. Basically, this allows me to make custom folders within Contact that have my most frequently used patches so that on my project specific instruments, I don't waste time looking for them. For example, cluster strings from various libraries are right here, drum sets are over here, my most used ADO libraries are right here. And what this allows me to do is to really easily and quickly add a sound that might not be baked into my permanent template. So if you're using Cubase, a huge feature that allows me to easily find any instrument I'm looking for in my large template is the search feature, but this only works if you've made sure to properly label all of the instruments in your session. If I need my certos, I just pull up the search, type in certos, and there they are. However, Logic does not have this feature natively built in to my knowledge. So if you're a Logic user, I'd recommend looking into something called Plug Search which is a third-party application that will essentially give you this amazing Cubase feature. Another great element of Cubase for productivity is the ability to simply highlight your final stem groups and then in your export audio mix down menu, you click the multiple channel selection, then hit this sync button. That's it. Now, any track I've highlighted, which in this case are my final stems, they're completely ready to export. I don't have to individually print my stems ever. Again, for Logic users, I sadly do not believe that you have this feature built in, but I do have you covered. Check out AutoBounce. It's again a third-party application that's gonna save you a ton of time when printing stems, which after writing music, this used to be the most time-consuming part of the production process, but now it can just be as simple as using Cubase. My second tip is an exercise to do if you wanna get faster at writing music as a composer, and that is number two. If you do not have any assignments, create them for yourself and set tight deadlines. In other words, practice. This is something I always did for fun long before anyone hired me to write music for them. And I'm not necessarily saying that you should practice writing fast, practice making the best music you can over and over and over again, and eventually you will get faster at it. And by setting the tight deadlines, you'll be able to gauge how much you've progressed in this process. A fun side note is I recently read that the wonderfully talented Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas do the same thing, particularly with James Bond themes. So it's no wonder that they were so successful when the real opportunity to write a Bond theme came to them. For composing, I personally would rescore cinematics from video games, 
action scenes from films or series, basically anything I could grab off of YouTube at the time. And today there's a great resource called the QTube that has scenes you can rescore for practicing. So just create an account and then you'll have access to download composer assets which you can use to practice rescoring scenes. Another great resource is Spitfire Audio as they do periodic competitions to rescore a scene and they provide you with the materials from high-end series like Westworld or Bridgerton for you to rescore. I wouldn't worry about competing, that's not our focus here. The focus is to write great music and learn how to do it under tight deadlines. So I recommend just using the materials to practice with. Also, and this is really important, I would always practice as if it's the real thing. Otherwise your efficiency won't really change. So for me personally, when I did this, I would set hard deadlines where I had to finish a scene and deliver it to myself. It takes time, but eventually it gets easier and easier and then you can either increase the amount of music you try to write or you can decrease the amount of time that you have to write so that you can continue leveling up. Moving on to tip number three, which is to know your sounds inside and out. A lot of modern sound libraries have so many patches these days. And on top of that, you can buy add-ons and this can make for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sounds from a single library. So my recommendation here is to not just peruse your assets, I highly recommend booking time with yourself to take a really deep dive into your virtual instruments. I would study them the same way that you would study music theory. Learn them inside and out. And during this time, I personally suggest writing music just for yourself or using some of those rescore materials that I mentioned in the previous tip. But don't use sounds that you already know. Look for new sounds, test out their flexibility, and see what they can be used for so that when the time comes to create under a deadline, you don't spend that time searching and experimenting. When you spot a scene, you should have so much experience with your sound arsenal that you know exactly what needs to be pulled up so that you can get to work sculpting the scene and writing music, not searching for sounds for hours. So quick example of this from my own experience. I have a piece of music called Save House, which I wrote while experimenting with sounds from Output's Exhale library and also playing around with some textures from Zebra. I found some really, really wonderful and interesting tones. Months later, I was co-scoring a Fox series called Next, and there was a scene that called for some really interesting psychological sounds. I immediately knew what to do. I pulled up my session from this personal track, Safe House, and brought in the sounds. Had I not spent the time creating that piece and experimenting, it wouldn't have been that fast and easy, and that show had some really tight deadlines. Which brings me to my next tip, which is number four, build wave file toolkits. A lot of sounds that help with production value, like risers, whooshes, accents, that are either tonal or atonal, they all come in contact libraries. However, I find that using them that way is really, really inefficient. For example, when using a riser from a contact instrument, it's really difficult to line it up if it's not a tempo synced sound. And if it is a tempo synced sound, but I decide to play back my scene, with my cursor starting in the middle of that riser, it's not gonna play back the crescendo correctly. So when I get libraries with patches that are filled with risers, whooshes, or accents, I personally record them and organize them into WAV file toolkits that can be easily dragged and dropped into my sequencer. So for example, here's a section where I need to add a riser, a drum whoosh, and a big hit to really mark the end of a musical moment. Instead of loading a contact patch for each sound, finding the library, then finding the right sound I'm looking for by playing through each key on the keyboard, I'm just gonna go to my sounds folder. Everything is organized by the type of sound, risers, whooshes, big hits, and so on. If I wanna preview a sound, I don't have to hold down a keyboard note and wait to see how the sound plays out. I can fast forward or rewind quickly so I can diagnose if this is the sound that I want. I can also use the tag system on Mac OS to highlight my favorite sounds in a particular category. Then, in seconds, I can just drag these sounds in, line them up, and I'm done. If you combine this step with the previous tip of really knowing your sounds, you can bypass the preview step. So you'll know exactly what you're looking for so you can just find it, drag it, and drop it in. Sometimes I can build entire cues this way if they're ambient because I have tons of ambient pads 
atmospheres, and so on that have been labeled by key, and I can just easily place them into a scene. So now it's my final tip for writing great music to picture more quickly, and that is to just take all of these steps and use them when writing music every single day, but by varying the task. I personally love the saying that repetition is the key to mastery. Studies have shown that the brain forms new pathways when a task is repeated often, thereby optimizing performance of the skill. Other studies have added to this, showing that if you add variability to your practice, it allows you to level up more quickly and effectively. This is called practice variability. To illustrate this, I'm just gonna use basketball as an example. So a player might practice shooting every day. That's repetition. But if they then manipulate their goal by altering the distance of every shot, for example, the first shot is from 15 feet, the next shot could be from eight feet, and the shot after that is from 12 feet. This is gonna help the player to level up their skills more efficiently. When it comes to composing, I've experienced an incredible degree of variability while writing every single day. Some cues are three minutes and I need to get them done in eight hours. Some are six minutes and I need to get them done in 12 or 14 hours, and others are one to two minutes and I need to get them done in maybe three or four hours. I personally believe that repeating this process day in and day out for so many years is part of what's contributed to my ability to write more efficiently. I would suggest trying to replicate this by choosing a scene you wanna practice scoring that's maybe two minutes and give yourself a strict deadline to complete it. Then choose an entirely different type of scene with a different length and again, create a deadline that is different but still challenging for the cue length. If you did this every single day or just as often as you possibly can, you'll find it becomes easier and easier and easier to write great music for large scenes in shorter amounts of time. And speaking of time, it looks like we're just about out. As always, if you found this information helpful, please share, like, and subscribe because doing so allows me to continue making free content just like this. Also, check out my free instrument tension pads, which can help composers save time when scoring with non-traditional sounds and textures. I've used this instrument on every major film and series that I've worked on for the past six years, and you can get a free copy at my educational website, modernmediacomposer.com. If you have any questions about the things that we've discussed in this video, just leave a comment below or reach out on social media. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and as always, I hope it's been helpful.